that's whatever it is. Sorry, I forgot to click on that. <laughs> I've done that now. So okay. I'll, I'll, I'll rehash. Go ahead. Okay. So I, I, I said, you heard what I said about the mindset. So mindset yeah. is our yeah. predisposition to a set of circumstances or facts. It's the way we respond to circumstances, situations, because we've been wired that way. So your mindset about, for <laughs> example, the time keeping that we talked about when we started, I said, we don't want to be like the African time people or community members, etc. So that's a mindset. So every time you have an event, you feel relaxed because there's a culture of lateness that people unconsciously adopt because they have been introduced into that culture and it becomes a norm for them. So that's your mindset. You don't think you need to be there on time. A different mindset is, well, I must keep to time regardless of what anybody else thinks. This is how I want to be. So that's my mindset in relation to that. But my thought process is what I put in there. And I don't think that our minds should control us. I think that we should control our minds. I think that that is the power that we have in us to unleash. Therefore, we need to take control of our minds and not the other way around where our minds control us. So what we put into our minds is what we take out. So, um, yeah, so those are my thoughts. Thank oh, you. wow. All right. <laughs> Thank you. And Joyce said, with thoughts, you've got control over your thoughts. But with mindset, a whole lot comes into your mind. And so we are looking at the difference between um, thoughts and mindset. And then if we, you heard all the things that if we said, because uh, Joyce spoke before we started recording. All right. So this is interesting because you've come in and out, in and out. Some are right, some are not, because I find that in teaching, teaching this has been, in my entire life, this has been the hardest thing I've ever done. I thought, um, uh, being divorced, which was easy, there was no hassle, was hard, you know, marriage breakup, but teaching this many times, I've gone to God, you got the wrong person, this is too hard. Uh, my my thoughts stink more than all the people in America. You know how huge America is. If you put all their stinking thinking together, mine is worse, mine is more. So I said, I haven't got to that yes, but then he said, as I teach you, you teach them, you get better. I said, all right. So I, I remember when I started this, everybody said, oh, that's what you do. You do mindset. I said, no, I don't. I did not know how to describe what I did then. But I said, no, I don't. And then um, they said, they said, but so when, anytime I had issues, I, I couldn't sell I, I, business and I, I was so backwards. So uh, I wasn't making money. So I was annoyed that I couldn't go and get um, um, funding, but I knew. I, I was smart enough to understand that if God says something to me, smart, be smart and just obey. Don't mess about. Don't look at people. Everybody's doing this. I should do it. Hey, well, they are succeeding. Yeah, it's different. It's different. Hey, somebody says, come and kill Goliath. And they give you a sword and the sword is bigger than you. And then you take stones. Are you all right? You've been waiting for a child for what? Your own with your own wife. And then God says, go and kill the child. I'm, I'm, you are mad. You are stupid. So me, I've learned to obey God. I'm chilled out. Okay. So I would say to them, what is, where is my mind? Because I needed to understand. Nobody could answer me. Where was my mind? It's in your soul. Okay, where is my soul? What is my soul? So, so you, we have the unconscious, the conscious, the subconscious, and the super conscious. I am not going to go into the depth of that. But... Um, our problem is we have been conformed to this world. When our parents gave birth to us, we came into the world and we said, this is it. Look at what people do. So that's what we're going to do. But over the years, God has helped me to understand that your thoughts are like the bricks that used to build a house. And your mind is the house. So um, I'm sitting in my bedroom right now, but I'm in a house. And the bedroom itself has four walls. And in the walls are windows and doors. 
something is making those walls solid. So the house is set, like your mind is set. The house is set with bricks and cement between each brick. So there will be no set house without the bricks. So the bricks are your thoughts and the house is your mind. When we say we've made up our mind or, or uh, we have a mindset, oh, don't mind them. They, their mindset is that they're never going to be wealthy. That's their mindset. You better leave them alone and go somewhere else. Or well, their mindset is once you join them, they're going to fail because you are black. So they're not going to take you on. So what they're saying is they have had thoughts that have created this belief because you cannot have a belief without first thinking about information that you've received. So this is how it works. You get information, which you can also call data, or you can call knowledge. You can refer to it as knowledge. When you get the data, you've got to interpret the data. You've got to, so I'm currently doing my PhD, and I'm interpreting data, I'm researching, I'm reading, I'm doing all that stuff. So it is based on that data, I write a report. My The entire 100,000 words is going to be about the data, the knowledge, the information I have gathered that I've been thinking on and I've brought new knowledge to it. I'm bringing something new in because that's what a PhD is all about. And you write based on what you found and what you are bringing into it. And then that becomes this thing called a thesis. And that's the house is solid based on information. But that information, I had to think about it. I had to analyze it. I had to bring all kinds of things in to tweak it out. That help, that's, I'm thinking on it so that I come to a place of understanding. And when I get to the place of understanding, part of thinking is understanding. And that right thinking will lead me to wisdom, the right application of knowledge. You cannot get to wisdom without understanding. So I call, I call, I refer to it as the digestive process of thought. Thought is the food or the yam you put in your mouth, you've chewed, you've swallowed. The yam is the knowledge, you swallowed it. Now, except you vomit immediately, exactly as you swallowed it, chewed and mashed up, it's, go, it's going to stay in your belly. When, it's, when a thought or information stays inside you, it's because you're thinking on it, you're musing on it, you're brooding over it, you're, you're going back and forth, you're writing stuff about it, you're reading things, you're thinking on it, you're talking with somebody else about it. And that's what's happening in your belly. Your digestive juices are breaking down those, those, that information. So that's why I call it the digestive process of thought. And when it breaks it down, your, your, your kidney cannot use yam in, in, in its mashed up state your, that you swallow. Your blood cannot use yam in that way. The food you've eaten today had to be broken up, broken down. So your body now understands yam. Okay, the carbohydrate goes here. And your blood takes a bit of carbohydrate. Your kidney cleans out the mess in the yam that you're going to go to the toilet to pass out. Your liver does its stuff, takes in what it needs to. Every part of your body, all the organs of your body are now working. Your heart is, that's what we say, you've got to eat right. So, so now your body understands yam because it has been broken down, digested. Understanding has come. So now oh, your body understands it. And now the wisdom is, it, it nourishes you. You're getting stronger, you're getting taller, you're getting bigger. Fatter is not good. Fatter is not good. It's important to be healthy. So, you're, so your body knows what, your body can move, your body can work, your body can sleep and wake up, your body can open and close its mouth, your hands can move because the food you are eating nourishes your body. And that's wisdom. That's one way of understanding. Another way is to look at the four bellies of a cow. A cow has four bellies. And what it does with the grass, eats it, regurgitates it, chews it again, goes into another belly, goes into the third belly, goes into the fourth belly. There are two different bellies. One creates the milk, the last two bellies, omasom and abomasom, and the other belly creates the what it uses to nourish its body for it to grow big and you eat meat. So that is the difference between thoughts and mind. Your thoughts are seeds that are planted on the ground of your mind. Like it or lump it, just as Joyce said, whatever grows on it is what is going to give back to you. So when we say, oh, this person is racist, it's because of the information they have 
they've thought on it. They have had no one say different. And if they have, they don't believe it. They choose to believe that black people are monkeys. They live in trees, period. They cannot work there. They are not educated, whatever, whatever. They are, we are going to repress them. And if you take your time as a black person to be listening to them, you are wasting your time. Or, now that's information. That is information that they're going to repress you. That's information. Well, it's not the kind you want to listen to. It's like taking um, excreta from the road, not even from the toilet, and eating it and digesting. You don't want to do that. That's excreta. That's the kind of information you do not want to consider at all. So based on that, the two definitions where our culture, stereotypes, like a fool said, um, um, the way we are wired. You wire your own brain. But because you are created in God's image and after his likeness, you're wired like him. A human being gave birth to each of us, so we're wired like them. But because you are created in God's image and after his likeness, you are wired like God. You are entitled as a child of God to abundance on every level, but we don't think like that. Those of us that are in the diaspora, we, we kind of go under, we say, oh, this is who we are. And we have entered the white mass. Let's just tow the line. I did not tow any line. They did not like me. It was okay. I just loved them. And I kept doing, nobody could send, say no to me that I have said, yes, it's going to happen. Especially it's within, it's within the law. I broke rules. I didn't break laws. I broke rules. So get used to it, especially if you are female. Oh, you're female. In Nigeria, you know, it's only the men that get, you know, it's a patriarchal society. Pardon? Sorry? Hello? God did not make life unfair. We choose that. God did not make life like that. Oh, they will stop in. I'm in Nigeria. You know, um, I went to buy something. I bought 30 of them. They were 300 naira each. I got home. I tend to keep my receipt, look over there, make sure I've not been charged over and everything is right. And I found out that she didn't charge me for 30. She charged me for one. She, she scanned one and then counted and forgot to put 30 in the, in the till. The, a few, it took a few days for me to go back because I wasn't going that way. And then I went and I spoke at the door. They looked at me. I said, yes, I bought 30. I only paid for 20, uh, for one. I need to pay for the rest. They looked at me at the door like, are you okay? They're coming. He said for you to disappear and shh, keep going. I said, I know the cash still operator. May I go? Yes. I went to the receipt. She was like, thank you. God bless you. Hey, thank you. But everybody else, there was, you know, part of being Part of being an entrepreneur is to have integrity. It's not the country you are in that determines your integrity. That shows the way you think. It is who you are. And who you are is determined by the way you think. So one of the laws of thought is, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Not so he will become. Not so he will soon be. Not so he might be. And not as a man prays. Because we can pray for the world. The whole of Nigeria, nobody needs to pray again. Nigerians, oh, we can pray. Ah, we, but has anything changed? Are things not more or less the same? You have one miracle here, then, then there's a, then Benny Hinn comes, then somebody comes, and Bishop Oedeko comes. And, and then when he goes, what happens to you? Has God only blessed the Bishop Oedekos of this world? No, he did. He said, we're all blessed. So you, we need to be asking ourselves questions like, why isn't this working for me? Why is because of the way you think? Because you are how you think, what you think. For as a man thinks in his heart, Proverbs 23, 7, so is he. Let me repeat, not as a man prays, not as a man dances, not as a man worships, is as a man thinks. All right, I'm going to share my screen. I thought I should say a few of those things first so that... Um, we get our act together. Let me know where you see my screen. Can you see my screen? Oh, I didn't know I did all that stuff. That's so strange. I'm not going to see you. We can see. We can see the screen. Fantastic. Thank you. I'm not going to see you. I will not see your chat, but I will see when it comes through. So if you want to stop, you can unmute or you can just ask, okay? I didn't know I had all this, all this drama. So that's who I am. Those are my two children's names in order of birth. It is my daughter that has the three children married and I am passionate about people and their success. I have written many books, 
but I've only put one on Amazon. I wrote this in 2016 and I wrote it in seven days. Yep, I've written another one that I'm going to give to anyone who chooses to work with me at the end, I'll tell you about that. And that one is called, um, I Can't Do Anything. Um, and that's who I am, see, I'm father of How to Think Global. Um, um, I do not refer to myself as a motivational speaker because I cannot motivate you. I can inspire you when I, when I, um, um, oh, what's that word? Research, and I research words a lot. When I research the word inspire, look at meanings, etymology, you need to go down to the base, to the root of a word. So you will understand what it means. English has watered down the words, 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 uh, uh, in, in English words come either from, stem either from Greek, Old Fre French, Old English really, and Latin, but it's mainly Greek and Latin. And I found that, that inspire means to in fire, light a fire up. So I'm not responsible. Once I've lit it up in you, are responsible to keep it going. But to be motivated, you are the only one who can motivate yourself. That's why it's so critical, vital, that you learn how to think right. Those are some of the people I've worked with, the organizations. I've either worked with them. Most of it has been one-to-one, -one, people that work in all of this. EY is the longest, uh, is she the longest? Yeah, in, in terms of the results. So what I do is I work with Black women, at least when I was in the UK, I still do it here. Um, work with Black women who want to get promoted in 12 months or less, 12 months or less. Now, why did I give it 12 months or less? because the longest anyone has ever been promoted working with me is eight months. And that was the first black woman in the UK who became an associate partner with EY. Um, the shortest and the most common has been six weeks. Don't ask me how it happens. I have no magic wands, no special prayers, absolutely nothing. All I know is that they come back to me, <gasps> They promoted me, and it's always some weird way that all, all kinds of weird. The lady in Accenture, she said, everybody that started with her, she worked with me for three months. It's usually when I do one to one, we start with three months. And she, she her, her job was to leave Accenture, go into another bank, do the job, and come back for three months. When she finished, she called me on the last day. She said, they called her to one side of that bank and said, We like you, we want you write your check. Tell us how much you want us to pay. We don't want you to go back to accept. I said, pardon? And she said, what should I tell them? What should I tell them? I said, what do you mean what should you tell them? A hundred thousand pounds, please. That's where we start. That's all I do. Hundred thousand pounds. Except you're already earning more than that. That's where we start. Wherever you, whatever level you are is irrelevant. We can, they can negotiate down. But if you are doing, eh, okay, mm, stop it. Uh, the last lady I worked with in the NHS was moving up up to, is it matron or so you should have seen in an hour she was interviewed in an hour she got the phone call you've got them you've got the job and that was in six weeks that was in six weeks uh the lady in the post office uh they called her they had been ignoring her they won't call her to meetings i said girl you're showing up yeah you know everyone here is black come on girl you're showing up let's let's do this and so she was doing what she had to do the person that was leading what she wanted to who she the position she wanted to be at, because there were other positions at that level, called her to one side and said, I am leaving and I have put you forward as the person that you take. So I tell you, it's not me. I know it's not me. There is no English I can speak. Shomax is here in Nigeria and he was the new director of sales. I said, help, my sales team is this. So I work with senior leadership teams like the board and the C-suite because the way they think matters, it will come all the way down to the receptionist in the organization. And you wonder, why, why are we not making it work? Uh, and then with their sales team so that they can increase their ROI. So as entrepreneurs, I'm only looking for an increase in your ROI. That's what this is all about. I don't want anything else. So this is who I am. I'm a thinking evangelist. Somebody I worked with uh, was um, lecturing in her organization for eight weeks. And she said, I think you just do deliverance. 
She said, you come to deliver us. Our brain is switched. Our brain is changed. So I said, I don't think I will use that. But um, I'm a thought transformation coach and consultant to businesses, organizations, and individuals. I, I offer thought treatments because if you're, you, you need, your thoughts need to be treated. Many times you don't actually know that this is how you are thinking. To enable an, inc an increase in personal organization and business are using my proprietary how to think framework of which there's a, a gamut of different programs I have created. And when I say I'm a mental health advocate for individuals and organizations, I'm not saying that from, oh, there's something wrong with you. Oh, you're sick. No, I'm saying that from a thinking point of view because that's your mentality. So I help you to make it right, think right. I work with sales teams to birth quick and powerful, increase in ROI, quick and powerful, critical, and senior executive teams to engender a cohesion of right thinking that takes the organization in the next right direction. All right, and so I use the How to Think for Priority Framework. So this is what we are going to do today. What you will learn, what thinking is, what an entrepreneur is, what is risk? Is there risk? What do you do about risk? how entrepreneurs should think, uh, how to develop thinking spiritually, and how you can work with me. And hot seats, if anybody wants to say, yeah, let's, let's tease out my, my, my business or whatever it is you've come here with, and we can do Q&A. But Q&A goes on as we go on. So uh, we shall be exploring the, the fine art of how to think to win as entrepreneurs. Listen, um, thinking is not about just thinking. You must think to win. You were created to win. I want that to sink. You were created to win. There's a friend of mine, less than an hour or so ago, he put up a picture on Facebook and I saw something in the background. Um, it's his property business. Um, it was a placard and it says, one billion naira. Um, it's something about his, it's a goal to sell land or real estate for one billion naira, I think in the next year. I, so I went into his message and I said, why are you standing? Is that place you are standing? Take that picture of your office. He said, oh, yeah, it's his property office, the one that is for property. I said, all right, fantastic. Change that black placard to $1 billion, please. <laughs> he sent him, he said, he sent a message, what, a, what, one word. I think it was, hey, hey, or something like that. And I didn't reply for a time because I was busy. So I, I replied with a thinking like, why, why you say it? Then he said, I will change it. You see, because it's not unrealistic. We're going to talk about smart and cuter goals, if I remember, because it's not in the slides. There is a difference. I don't know why you want to be smart, be doing smart goals. Why? Why well, you could do cuter goals? They're cute. And when I tell you what C-U-T-E-R stands for, you will see. But one thing that people, uh, uh, they have a problem with is fear. But you are not giving a spirit of fear. Fear is a spirit. It is a spirit. It is not a human being walking about. You are a spirit. So if you are afraid, it's not like, like everyone Joy said, those are the thoughts you are allowing. So I know as I've been speaking, some of you have been shaking your head. This one, she's on in cloud. Oh God, where did she come from? She doesn't even know how things work. I mean, she has to be realistic. Sorry, I don't do that. If your idea of being real is, seeing me on camera, I'm moving my fingers, I'm moving my head. And this is your idea of reality, you are wrong. Because God's idea of reality is spirit and you are spirit. So if you are struggling, it's because you are not living in the right realm. You are not seeing from the right place because you don't think that way. You think certain people are going to be more than you. You know, um, Tony Elumelu, you know, Bill Gates. You know, uh, Mr. Virgin Atlantic, Richard Branson, you know, Otedola, you know, all kinds of people that are, you know, the queen, sorry, the king and his family, they don't have to wave down a boss. They don't have to say, oh, I've got to change my car. They're saying things they don't think about. Stuff is sorted out for them. And you think, think you will never get there. That's exactly what will happen. You will never get there. It's true. If you think you can, you are right. If you think you cannot, you are right. It took me at least a decade to understand that. And I was angry. I said, oh, if I think I cannot, you should come to me and talk to me and say, Kemi, you can know, you can know. <laughs> no, because nobody's is in charge and in control of my thinking. I am, like Joyce said, I control what I think. You can't inject me with a thought 
You can't. You can't put something into my body and say thing. You can command it. You can say, I'll cut off your fingers if you don't uh, deny Jesus, if you don't uh, go down this road, if you go and use the toilet. Irrelevant. What did um, Mama Rose, was that her name? <clears throat> when in, in, in those days still, there was, there was no more slavery, but the blacks could not sit down in buses in America. They had to stand. And they could not, they had to stand, at, sit at the back. And this lady sat where they said, it took some thinking, some audacity, not a man, it was a woman. And that was how things changed. It took one person saying, you think we won't be in your, in, in, in your shop? We will be in your shop. We are bringing our food to Harold's. We are bringing our, 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 our charcoal or whatever it is you want to Harold's. We are bringing it. And you get there, they say no. They can't say no for the next 10 years. We are bringing it. And we keep bringing it. And one day they're going to say, okay. They're going to say, okay. Straight, they're going to say, okay. It's not going to change. As long as you keep it and you keep that thought. Not, I'm not saying anything about prayer. I'm not saying eh, praise and worship, jumping up and down. I'm saying use this place and think scripture. Think principles that God, gravity, God put it here now. It was in the devil. It was in you. It was in me. Throw something up, it's going to drop. What do we do about that? You, th you don't have to believe it. Principles don't respect you. They don't honor you. They will be as is. The sun will always come out and go down. It will rise and go down. You can't do anything about it. In winter, there are four seasons. It's going to one season after another. You can't do anything about it. It's the same with the, with the, um, with the law of thought. You can't do anything about it. And it's a fine art. And the reason we find it so difficult is because we're not interested in transformation. We talk transformation. We don't do transformation. Transformation, we switch you. You'll be talking like this and even better than this. You'll be, you, you will see, it's as if your eyes change, but you're not using these eyes because these are physical eyes. That this, is, this does not see with accuracy. This does not see with precision. This does not feel with accuracy. That's why you can't be led by your emotions. Uh, <laughs> I'm divorced. Uh, look at everybody. Uh, that's emotion. So when you finish crying, and did you change anything? No, you don't. You're not the human being that does not want things to change. Just want to cry and then nothing else will change. I, I think that's a waste of life and time. And that used to get me very angry about myself. I finished crying and I look around me. Everything is just as I left it when I started crying. So I said, I need something to change. I need something to switch. That was when the bells and whatever started to happen. So thinking is a fine art. Go and, go and type in Google what fine art means. You will see it's a different level. I'm told that Da Vinci, for him to have painted the Last Supper, that he went into a place of meditation till this Last Supper thing became his reality. When he painted, Everybody, wherever it is, everybody, even when you see it online, you're like, wow, what? that's how real your business should be. That's how awesome. You've come with help. Everybody in business, you've come with something that will help people. You're not just doing business because you want to earn money. People need food. People need coaching. People need um, real estate. People need whatever it is you do. And um, they need to travel. They need to import and export. People need it. And you're not like the guy that slept with one. They gave him one talent and he went to sleep and woke up. He was a lazy boy. You are like the one with five talents and one with two. And the minimum you can do with your business is double it. Every year, your ROI should double. Not uh, we, we, we increase by 50%. What does that mean? Why? What does that mean? What the price that has been paid for you to be able to breathe in and out? Huh? <laughs> so let's look at the dictionary meaning of the word think. To believe something or have an opinion or idea. It means to use the mind. It means to reason. It means to have an opinion. It means to conceive. And I put believe and conceive in, um, in, in bold because I want you to think about it. When you conceive something, you have, it has become a reality. So when a woman conceives, that's what we say. Oh, she has conceived. We didn't say she's giving birth. We say she has conceived. She has conceived what? Something, another human being that is doing what's in her body, growing. 
She can't see it, but she can talk about it. She can't see this child, but she's buying clothes. She can't see this child, but she's getting things ready. They can see the child under the microscope. She does not know that, oh, maybe the child is going to have Down syndrome. She's not seeing any of that. Neither is her husband. She's just seeing that we're going to have a child. We're going to have a child. That's how you should see your business. You've conceived something. That's what thinking is. You conceive it is a baby. Every conceived B A B N, but it was some other name. Doesn't the name is not quite relevant right now, but names are very relevant. But she conceived this idea and she gave it personality. And one other person joined with her, another person joined with her. That's why there's something I teach called the owner's mentality. That means if you work in an organization, which wherever you work, the owner, the person that started that had a mentality, a way he was thinking or she thinks about it. Every employee in that organization needs to have that mentality. Her mentality is, this is going to work. We're going to help black people in diaspora. We're going to help black people wherever they are in the world. We're going to this, we're going to that. Things are going to get better. Things are going to move. That is what everyone needs to have in the organization. If you have infighting, somebody's not agreeing with what the CEO said, they need to be sacked. I don't waste time because part of what I do is I, I, I highlight who you need to train to be even better and who you, you need to sack. Don't waste time. Go and ask wealthy people. They don't waste time. Uh, uh, you are not doing okay. Bye. Because every second, every minute matters. Money loves speed. That's what that means. Who is an entrepreneur? A person who sets up a business or businesses taking on financial risks in the hope of profit. She gets pregnant. People. A husband and wife sleep together to conceive a child when they are ready for it. They're not sleeping together to conceive a goat in the belly of the mother. Look, the entrepreneur does the same thing. Hope of profit, not hope of loss. But what do we hear? Ah, that's risky. Ah, I'm not going there. They might not take me. They might not do this. You are already hoping for failure. Ah, you know, the research I've done, all the other businesses in my niche, in my industry, they failed. That's you thinking that way. I will come into the same niche. I don't think that way. I don't know how it's going to happen that I will be amazingly, uh, what's the word? Uh, I will be amazingly successful, but I know it's going to happen. And that's not my job. That's not my business because that's where we fall off the cliff. We want to become God. Ah, If I do this, if I do that. No, it doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. There is a work God does that you can never do because you are in the flesh. Let him do his work. Now. All you have to do is to believe that this is what you want, this is what you want, this is what you want. According to his divine will, you, good is supposed to happen to you. That's a non-negotiable. They say, oh, teenagers feel entitled. Christians should feel entitled. You must be entitled because you are entitled. You are, you are supposed to get it. It is your entitlement to live in abundance. Why should you be thinking differently? Hope of profit. They take on financial risks in the hope of profit. Now let's see what is risk. Venture. So this is how they look at it. Whatever your venture is, has it been tested or not? We've got to see. Go and do like a pilot. See if it's going to work. Is the price point of your products or services, is the price point right? Have you gone into, have you done your marketing? Have you, what, what is your competition saying? Hey, go and look at what everybody, I hated that thing. I didn't understand it, but I just, just did not click. I just did not, I, and yet I still did not understand it when I started business. I said, no, I'm not interested in competition. So I'm looking at you. Oh, how many did they do? Let me do the same. Why? 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 This stress is disturbing my brain. I don't have time for that. The general market conditions. Okay. This is selling. This is not selling. This is selling. Ah, okay. Fashion waves stress. Woo! Look at what's in trend. Want something I do personally? I don't do, I don't buy what they buy. When those jeans came out, they were tearing and I saw my kids buy, I said, why are you buying clothes and tearing these? I knew they didn't tear. And they would laugh at me. I, it's, Mom, this is what's in vogue. I've never owned one. I never plan to own one. When jeans came out and half your bum was showing, half, it was really low waistline. I never got one. Aside from the fact that I, I have, I, I don't see myself as that person. I want to be noticed for being different. If I'm wearing what everybody's wearing, nobody's going to see me. And that's how I run my business. That's how I run my life. I'm not becoming 
part of everybody. Look, if all of us are wearing green skirts and I come out with my own green skirt, but there's a white spot on mine, do you think I won't be noticed? Oh, I will be. That's what innovation is about. You show up and you innovate because you definitely have an idea. Everybody else in your industry does not have, but you're too afraid to carry it out. And that's where I come in. Say, what's the idea? What is it? Let's do it. And before you know it, the people that have been waiting for someone bold enough with the audacity to say, this is how I work. So somebody came in to do something in my house today, but he came too late. I said, look, I have an appointment, I discuss this. So I said, but tell me a bit about it. They said, so what do you do? When he told me stuff, so I told him, I said, I teach God's people how to think. What's that? So I've never heard that before. He said, can you tell me more? I told him a bit more. Do you know what he ended up saying? He said, I'm about to make a transition. I'm not too sure about it in my business. Do you mind if I call you? I'm just being me. <clears throat> I told him point blank, it's not my set though, so. He said, I've never heard anybody do what you say. I said, yeah, I'm the only one in the world that does it. And I don't make bones about it, neither I nor there. It's just being done. There are people that need it. Show up, show up with your wares, with whatever it is. There are people that need it. I need to read this to you. I need to read this to you. Yeah, let me read it. Yeah, I, I wonder if that's what the translation I'm looking for. The translation I want. Yes, it, it, it will show up. And it is um, Proverbs chapter 11, verse 26. I want, yes, it's still here. I want to tell you what will happen to you if you do not sell what you have. Because Christian says, yeah, Christian, why should you say, sit down there? Sit, stay there, stay there. People curse those who hoard their grain, but they bless the one who sells in time of need. These last days, People need what you have. Go to market. Curses on those who drive a hard bargain. Blessings on all who play fair and square. The people will curse him who withholds grain. But if he sells it, blessings will be on his head. The people curse him who holds back grain when the public needs it. But a blessing from God and man is upon the head of him who sells it. Don't sit down there. And be saying, eh, nobody, they didn't let me do it. They didn't let me, oh, nobody let me. Um, if, if, if I do this, nobody would stop it. Stop it. Show up with everything you've got. Be bold. Walk in like you own the world because you do. Show up with what you, this is all you have. Do you think I do anything else? I don't know what anybody else does, but I know how to think. I know how to do it. I know how to teach it. And I'm not backing down for anybody. Don't you dare back down because somebody needs what you have. Otherwise, the idea would never have come to you. Otherwise, hey, if nobody needs it, start the business and sell to yourself now. Be selling to yourself. Then force your children to buy it like your husband. <laughs> force your, your father and your mother. No, but somebody needs what you have. And you being like, oh, hey, I, don't want to, I don't want to go too far. Pardon? Sorry. Hello? Nah, let's snap out of it. Sims business becomes a gamble once you begin to consider risk. It's a gamble. I may or may not make it. And I hear people in business say that. That's stinking thinking walking on stilts. No, it's stinking thinking on steroids walking on stilts. You are up. You are gassed up. You are not, you are not there. You, you are just not there. Well, I don't care what another business is doing. And I used to, oh, this coach is doing this. Oh, this coach is doing this. No, no. That's not the way it should be. No, nope, that's not the way it should be. I don't care what a coach is doing. What did God send me to do? What's pulsating and burning in my heart? When should I do it? That's when I'm doing it. Period. You don't like it. Don't talk to me. It's not by force. There are 213 million people in Nigeria as at 2021. Forget international work. Forget global work. I cannot reach 213 million now. There's too many. If I just have, it's not even 10%, 1% of 230 million. Whoops. So I don't have time to be looking at you, what you did, what you didn't do. Ah, they're selling, oh, they're going to Dubai. I don't care. When my Dubai time is, comes, do you think I'm going to miss it? It's not going to happen. As long as my thinking is right, are you play. So how entrepreneurs should, should think? Now you need to, to, we need to break this down. Man should make an art of thinking. The master thinker is an artist 
and is careful to paint only the divine design on the canvas of his mind. So that means don't just paint. Okay, uh, let me show you a picture. Don't just paint. Paint masterfully. Paint masterfully with your thoughts. I was praying, I think it was yesterday, and I don't know if you can see this. Can you tell me if you can see what I'm about to put up? Can anybody see this? Can somebody unmute and let me know, please? Yes. So you we see, can two, see it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Two houses. Two houses. Is it, yeah, it's mm -hmm. the two different ways people think. Meditation is deep thinking. The ones that think on the surface, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the ones at the, at, is the house at the top. But the ones that think in detail, in detail, that we're going to earn this amount. This is the shape. This is the this is what the door is going to look like. And they think in morning, afternoon, night. They think in morning, afternoon, night. They don't care what's happening around them. It's not about what's happening around them. It's about what they are thinking. For as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Not as a man, as things happen around a man, so is he. That's not it. It's your thinking that shapes you. So are you thinking like a, a lord, a, a, a dame, a madam of the manor, the, a true CEO, or you're just saying see your founder, see your founder, and then you go home, I don't think, I don't know. That's why I doff my heart to a fool. It takes a lot to start a, something with human beings. It takes a lot, my heart. I don't know you, ma'am. <laughs> it takes a lot to have a, 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 a desire a dream like this and bring it, because this is not for her, it's for other people. Paint only the divine design, on, not your own design. That's why you need to know what does God want for you? What did he create you here for? Okay, so what do you want from me? He's always good. That's the beauty about it, it's always good. And she carries on, and he paints these pictures with masterly strokes of power, and decision. You've got to have power and you've got to be decided. The fourth fundamental of how to think to win is decision. You've got to decide. What are we going to do? How are we going to do it? When are we going to do it? And the fifth fundamental is do the work. Work. Get it done. That's the way to think. The strokes should not just be you know, uh, we don't know if it will work, girl. Hey, I said I'll be there at six o'clock. Everyone said she sat here for 30 p.m. a whole 30 minutes before, only to find that the link was not working. Because we don't start late. That's power. That's masterly. Power and decision is your business. You must show up powerfully. Don't be showing up. Because eh, I used to show up like that. Eh, okay. Eh. I know what God wants for me. It's this in my thinking. Let me just pressure. Huh? And I was wondering why things didn't change. <laughs> if you want to move a marble table, you just do like this. It didn't move. Up. It didn't move. Up. It didn't move. Up. Or do you gather power? Two hands. Call in this guy and this other guy with muscle. And we push and it moves. Don't you want things to move? <laughs> <laughs> and then a decision that we are winning. We are winning. That's the way you think. We are winning. You're not looking, oh, we failed it. Ah, is that your business? Are you in charge of how things work in the realm of the spirit? You are not. You're in charge of what you want, your own thinking. That's all you rule. So chill. So, 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 so. How is this going to happen? Because I know every single entrepreneur, they have ideas and visions of winning, but then you just throw it away. You, you wrap it up, you put it under the bed, you talk with somebody that fills your mind with yak, yaki data and knowledge. And they say, that's what happened to my grandmother. That's what, my mind died of cancer. I don't talk with such people, me too. If you come near me and you say something like, this Nigeria, I, I depart from you, I will make you depart from me. You don't talk, like, don't talk like that around me. You pray for it, for the country, and then you throw, pull it down. Hey, ah, you know, that's how we are. Hey, be good, be good, be good. You, that's how you are. Not the Nigeria I know, not the one that God is, is working on. Bye bye, but not the place I'm starting. No, see you. And, I, and my face is hard about it. That's our problem. We are not taught. Having perfect faith that there is no power to mar their perfection and that they will manifest in his life the ideal made real. 
she, you can see that what I'm talking about here is not physical stuff. <laughs> Do you think Bill Gates um, got rich just by selling computers around the world? Do you think Beyonce is where she is without a spiritual backing? If you've been watching the internet, you'll be seeing all the interesting things. Go and ask people. Go and ask. Don't, don't ask people. Go online. Just check. Every single person, evil or good, there's somebody bigger than them backing them up. What are you doing? You think it's, you're pushing your product, going here, talking there, getting this funding. Stop it. You're, you're doing too small. You're doing small. There's nothing like too small. Small is small. Minute, speck of dust. We can't see it without using a microscope what you are doing. Stop it. Because what you have people need, and you're not going up far enough. You are doing your local community. You are, you are doing e-com, your, your, oh, no, no, no um, the, what do they call it? Not e-commerce. Um, oh, there's one organization, they, every, uh, every community has it. And you join, oh, I've joined, oh, I've gone to network, and nothing is happening. Still, you know nothing is happening, but you're the only one who knows. So because nobody else knows, you're just looking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I went to this. I was giving, and everybody's busy getting a award. For what? For what? What did you do that has moved the globe? You're still moving your community, your nationality. When there's international and then global, and you're still doing, hey, we have to start from somewhere. You've been somewhere for too long. Transformation requires movement. Transformation, that word means metamorphosis in the Greek. It means transform, form into something different that does something different and something more. Example, the monarch butterfly, only in the egg stage for three to five days. After five days, it is dead. Some of us have been in where we, the level we've been for so long, we are dead, we don't know. Other people know we stink, but we don't know. We are just dead egg. We've gone beyond five days. But it hatches within three to five days. It is giving birth to an elite and it becomes a caterpillar of the lava. And that lava just eats and eats and eats, changes its skin because it gets big, eats and eats, changes its skin. And it is like that for 12 to 14 days. Between 12 and 14 days, it morphs again, transforms. Because what the egg could not do, the lava cannot do. That is transform. The lava can now do. That is transformation. Now the lava changes into a pupa. It covers itself in a cocoon, it's transforming. And inside, I went to study it, it loses its legs that the lava had, it grows protein, it creates the antenna, it has its six legs, longer legs, it had how many legs before? Everything is happening inside that cocoon. And between 10 and 12 days, the cocoon must open and let out the butterfly. When the butterfly comes out the cocoon, it stays there for a while to let its wings dry. What the lava could not do, the pupa now does. That's transformation. And the monarch butterfly, some could live for weeks. I think the monarch, adult monarch butterfly lives for much longer than 14, than two weeks. <clears throat> but it is at the stage of the butterfly that it can give birth to more eggs. If you are not at a place where you can create another you, that's what, an egg, and help that person start another business or help that person, give that person a job, you've been too long where you are. And it's only your thoughts that are keeping you there. It's nobody, it's you. And that's di pretty difficult for many to accept. It was difficult for me to accept that, Kemi, the life you have now, you created it with your thinking. Ah, no, no, no. It was my husband, eh, and we got divorced. No, no, no. I, I had to be a single mother for so long. No, no, no. I, I had no job. Ah, I, I Who was creating all that? You. You accepted it, Kemi. You accepted it, Kemi. Until I accepted that I accepted it, nothing changed. Somebody wants to say something? Okay. So let's carry on. All power is given man through right thinking to bring his heaven upon his earth. And this is the goal. Because when we think of heaven, everything is perfect. Don't you want it to be perfect here? Yes, you do. Yes, you do. And th there are rules for this to happen. Fearless faith. That I don't care what's happening, what's breaking down. It's going to work. You're thinking. 
You're not resistant to whatever is happening. You're not fighting, you're not pushing, you're not abusing, you, are, you have integrity and you love people. You're not, you're not lying about your prices. You're not sending a product that's half cooked, half baked, something is spoiled somewhere. You know, and you still post it because you know, they might just be fed up, they won't, they won't. don't do that. You're, you're planting spiritual seeds that will grow and come and bite you. So don't do that. Love the people that you sell to. Love them so much you create more. So many of you, you should be creating more. You say you're still selling the same amount, the same size, the same thing. If I do this, it might not work, you know. I only have, you know, what I have, the money I have. Who asks you for more money? Create one of that item, sell it. Create another one, use the money, take your profit, then use the rest to create another one or two, sell it. Then that's how we grow. Not by sitting still and saying, no, this cannot happen. So let's do an exercise in thinking. Yeah. These are exercises. Do you remember this? I think it was um, Toyin that put this up, scarcity versus abundance. I want us to read the first one, the one in blue, the first one, the, green, the one in green, not light green. So it's the first one and then one, two, three, the fourth one in green, and then the last one in kind of orange. And anyone, please tell me the thinking behind each, what you think the thinking is behind what's under scarcity and what's under abundance. So the first one we're going to look at is, there is never enough, that's scarcity and abundance. There is always more where that came from. I'm, I'm putting a lot into what I teach in coaching. It could take weeks for people to get this. So I'm not expecting you to get it at once. Thankfully, there's a recording you can go and listen. There is never enough, that's scarcity. There is always more where that came from, that's abundance. Tell me what you think the thinking behind each of these phrases is. Please, let, let's just move quickly. Anyone? Anyone? You can unmute or you can type it. <laughs> There's never enough is the poverty mentality and that poverty may not be real in that way. So people who have poverty mentality are not poor people. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay. They're not necessarily poor people, but they have a poverty mentality and okay. think that they never have enough. And of course, the opposite is the abundance one. So what's the thinking? What are they thinking? What, I, what idea of, what thoughts do you think they had to write these two things? Well, there's never enough comes from a thinking of fear, a thinking of not going to be able to make it. So lack of confidence, if you like, mm -hmm. and things like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like that. And how about the thinking behind the abundance statement? There is always more where that came from. Yes. So, so that is that will be the opposite: is the confidence that you have, the 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 oomph that you mm. have mm. to keep going. You don't see barriers. You mm. don't see limitations. You just see possibilities. Mm. Even where there are obstacles, you feel that you can push through those obstacles, those barriers to get what you want. So it's that sort of thinking that would then harvest the abundance because of lim lim limitations. Yeah. yeah, thank you so much, Efuru. So Efuru said something um, that you don't see barriers, but the truth is we do see them. The thing is, when, when it shows up, <clears throat> you don't pay it any mind. You go back to what you are thinking. There is more where that came from. And you may yeah, have that's, to that's what I mean. Yeah, yes, exactly. Yes. I, I agree. Yes. There, of course, yeah. there are barriers. Also. Over and over and over again. As often as you can, yep, there is there is more where that came from. The next day, there isn't there is more where that came from. The next day, there is more where that came from. Every second, of course, you, there is more. Where, I remember there was a time after I we were separated before the divorce. Every day I sat in the car to drive. I would see me having an accident. Oh, 
always every day. Then I started to confess a scripture. I don't know how many times a day I did. I just kept doing it. I don't know how long it took. One day I just noticed I was not seeing that anymore. I was not seeing accidents anymore. Me, oh, it was me having this accident. As often as it came up, I attacked it. I said, it's, it's like saying, I am well. Have you heard of the man that slept with all kinds of women every day, drank a whole bottle of whiskey every day and smoked and he was a hundred years old and he was asked, he said, what is the secret of long life? He said, he says this every day. <laughs> you heard what I said, sleeping around. Anyhow, this is what he says every day, rejuvenating, revitalizing power of God Almighty flows through me like a golden river, vitalizing, transforming every atom of my being so that every atom of my being dances to the rhythm of the eternal God. Then he goes to abuse his body and then he says that because his thinking is, I believe it. He has thought enough that I believe those words is going to work for me. He's not just saying it. And like many of us, we pray before we get up from our knees. We're already saying, it's not going to help you. It's your thinking. And God will answer your thinking. It's your thinking that makes you. And God is not going to force anything. So let's look at the green one. Ask self, how can I get by with less than expected? We're always looking for. And abundance says, ask self, how can I give more than expected? I used to be there. No, how much do they have? No, let, let's, I have 10. Well, yeah, people are giving it to me. I'm going to give them two. That's, that's the mentality. The thinking there is just, it's because, what you're thinking is, I don't have enough. That's already poverty. That's the poverty mindset. Poverty mentality, if we mention, I don't have enough. So this small, I have, let me keep. But that small that you have, you're not meant to keep. You're meant to give because you can't be held back because you know there is more where that came from. Aye. And the other says, how can I give more than expected? Here, take it off. Because you, you're not shaking. Hey, if I don't have enough to pay my mortgage, you're not shaking. You have faith in God. And the last one, they are entitled and fearful. The, the way people use entitlement these days is different. They are thankful and confident. There is peace about being thankful. There is peace about being confident. But when you feel entitled and fearful, you, are, you see, thoughts are energy. They're energy. You're shaking, you're vibrating at a particular. I'm not doing new age. I'm not doing all this crystal. No, I mean, I do Jesus. That's what I do. But thoughts are energy. God created you to have energy. When he says, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, sub subdue it, and have dominion. To have dominion, you need to have energy. Kings, weak kings don't sit on thrones. They don't make it in life. Weak kings, it doesn't work like that. You've got to show up with energy that I know what I'm doing. If you draw near me, you will feel the heat. I speak the way I speak because I'm passionate about it. And I'm not just, oh, yeah, no, no, this is me. Try and get me to talk gently like a fool. It will be so fake. It's not me. Before I used to try and be like, <laughs> I said, no, this is who I am. So this is how it is. You don't have to listen to me. They don't have to accept it. It's not going to change. This is me. And this is all you got. So we're going to use another um, PowerPoint to go into the next. Um, uh, uh, okay. So I want to teach you now how to develop thinking spiritually. Because that's what you need to do. You need to develop thinking spiritually. Please let me know when you can see the screen. Okay, I think you can. I'm not sure if you can, but everybody's so quiet. To this end, I created well, two we frameworks. We can, we can. Okay. <laughs> Yes. Two frameworks for thinking spiritually. There. We're not going to do the five hours because that's going further. We're going to do the five S's for developing thinking spiritually because you know you need to know how to at least develop it for, 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 for starters. So how to develop thinking spiritually, I created the five S's. Pray for spunk, reach for staying power. You need spine, be stout-hearted. You're an entrepreneur, you're not a wimp. Commit to substance. All right, so let's go through them one by one. Pray for spunk. 
to when we say that person is funky, and you don't come in and say, Well, I'm just doing this business. If somebody's speaking out of turn, warn them. If somebody's not doing what they are told in your business, get rid of them, have a nice conversation. This is where I'm going. If you're not willing to go with me the way I've said we are going, you cannot work with me. It's not where you're playing, hey, help me now. Hey, hey. No, we're not being emotional now. We can't be led by emotions. Emotions are here today, gone tomorrow. Two o'clock, you're happy. Three o'clock, you're sad. How can you be led that, by, by that? That's not business. You don't plan to make money. The Bible tells me to be led by the spirit of God. I'm being led by him. And it's not pretty all the time. In my audacity story, you know, I, I'm sure I put it up where I, I said I'm having um, guests every day. This is day 15. My cousin was our client, uh, our guest today. She's a double amputee. And she has had lung transplant. She was sick for 20 plus years. But what she is doing today, oh. <laughs> pray for spunk. God, I need what it takes to do what I need to do. Show up with everything you've got. Don't come in, have baked, have cooked. Reach for stay power. How do I stay? How do I keep going? And when the winds blow, I'm still staying. Reach for it. You might need a coach. You might need a mentor. You might need to go and read books. You might need to read lots and lots of scripture. You will definitely need to meditate. That's something I teach. Biblical meditation. Hey! Stay in power. Because there's winds are going to blow, hurricanes are going to come, tornadoes will show up in your business. You are going to fail at this. And but what are you going to do? Pack it in. And I'm not doing it again. I did that twice in my business. I'm not doing it again. And I came back with my tail between my legs. Okay, God, I'm sorry. I'm back. Hey, I didn't make money. I'm poor. <laughs> and the more I pressed it, the richer I've become. The more I pressed it, the more people I'm able to help. That's what this is about. Uh, make earning money. And becoming richer and richer. The more money you make, this is the reason, the more people you can help. It's not so that you can build houses and, of course, build them. And rent them out because people will need them. Live resplendently. You're supposed to. You are entitled to it. God does not give plenty to wicked people. And if wicked people have it, it will soon be taken from them. Say, please. You need spine. You know, your spine allows you to sit straight up. You can bend, you can, when you don't have a spine, they say your spine is damaged. They say you are either paraplegic or you are paralyzed. You can't do anything. You can't move your arms. You can't do anything yourself. Every, you can barely, I know what's her name, Erickson, J J Tada Erickson, Johnny Tada Erickson, is, she uses her mouth to write. This is all she can do with her head. No, nothing can work. You need spine. Choose it. Choose it. Quit giving excuses. We shall get there soon. Soon is not on the calendar. Very soon. Soon is not number one to 12 on the clock. What is the time? What is the date? When? Hey, you may not hit it, but we are going anyway. <laughs> Be stout-hearted. Grow your business with small-mindedness. Be stout-hearted. Be strong. Choose to be stout-hearted. And it's as a man thinks in his heart, not in his head. His heart. For out of the abundance of the heart, you now speak what you've been thinking. It's critical. And that's the same heart that beats, doo -doo, doo -doo, that gives us life. So you can see if your thinking is in your heart, it's about giving you life. <laughs> Give your business life. You are your business. Commit to substance. If it does not look like what it should look like, stop. There's no substance. If this is not what God sent me to do, period. I'm running a group program, a few other things, and it's called Think Like God. I heard God say that to me in January this year. I said, hey, he said, yeah, be a group program. I said, yeah. I said, okay, I only want 10 people. I can't do more than 10 people because I need to give them the best. If I have 15, 50, and I'm not interested in the money. It's not the payment I get that sustains me. It's God that sustains me. So I said, okay. I only want 10 people. I put it here. I put it there. I was counting one, two, 
three, four. I didn't stop till I got 10. In, I think, under two weeks. Yes, please. Yes, please. I want to join. Either you pay in full or you pay um, every month. Two, two, three people in the UK that said they were going to pay in full. Everybody in the UK, they pay in full. And it's a year-long program. I was like, because I'd said to my mind, the Holy Ghost is 10 people. Around. And I'm, I was doing the work and I was not frightened. I do you know I have 13. Because other people, oh, please, can I? I said, no, I can't. I, I can't have time. Because when I do a group coaching program, I also give you one-to-one -one time. It's just a lot of one-to-one -one time. And people don't do one-to-one -one time in group coaching programs. I do. Because I think you need, you need it. You can't, I can't be talking to all of you. You all have different things you're thinking of. So yeah, I think there are 13 now. I said, then what's amazing about it is a Muslim joined us in Nigeria. She came after me. I said, oh. I said, I use the Bible. She said, it doesn't matter which translation should I buy. <laughs> that was her question. I thought she was joking. Her one-to-one, -one, I think less than a month in. She said, I want to get born again. You know, I said, pardon? She got born again. If you see the way she's working and her business is increasing, <clears throat> do what you need to do. So God does not use wimps. You will need spunk, staying power, spine, stout-heartedness, and substance. Imagine having staying power where you have thrown in the towel in the past. What I see right now is somebody is a woman, you have, you've been running a business and one aspect of that business, you stopped. You stopped that part and you've never gone back to it. You threw in the towel and you've never gone back because it failed, you lost money. Da, 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 da. Go back and get that thing up and start again. What would that look like for you? If you have staying power, you say you, you're, you're looking, you think you're going to, you beat me. I beat you. I'm the human being. You are not. I'm the one with the power God gave. It's not you. You are a situation. And I determine how situations in my life go. It will be like magic. And I told you, there are principles. So if, if somebody who does evil uses it to work for them, if somebody who does good use it, it will work for them. Except the one who uses it for evil things, stuff is going to come back. What you sow, you reap. You're going to use it to hurt people. What you sow, you reap. So that's how to develop thinking spiritually. And we'll now finish this. I'm sure you can see my screen. Right. <clears throat> so what we've just done is how to develop right thinking as an entrepreneur. And these are five ways entrepreneurs should think and we are done. Think high standards, no compromise. Not like what somebody else is doing. Didn't Harrods know that Max and Spencer, John Lewis and all those, Army and Navy, when they were still there. Didn't and Harrods know they were there when they came to set up. But look at their level, look at their standards. You cannot enter Harrods with a hoodie. You can't. The, people go there to have tea. So if people have invited me once or twice, and it's a, a three-tier tray, some of you are probably gone, with little tiny sandwiches, tiny tea a little tea cakes and a cup of coffee is 50 pounds. It's 50 at least then, no, it's 50 pounds. <laughs> so tea, 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 tea. they set things up, but they knew where they were going. They they had an idea and they kept to it. They said we have max, we have these people sell. Look, you can go into ours and buy a suit, jacket and trousers, no shirt. Jacket and trousers for 2,500 pounds. But uh, if you're going to Max and Spencer, it could be hmm, 400 pounds, 500 pounds. This was 2,500. What, what fiber did they use that everybody does not get from cotton? <laughs> Think about it too. Num number two, have a willingness to mine for the gold on your mind. That requires thinking. Gold is the only element God created on the face of the earth that can never be destroyed. Never be destroyed. Doesn't matter where you put it, what it goes through. Doesn't matter. Can never be destroyed. Mine for the gold on your mind. So I've written a book. I told you I've written quite a few. 
I just need to put them out there. Um, grace, grit, and go. I went to study what it takes to mine for gold. And I related that to thinking. The depth. I don't mean depth in terms of meters down below ground. That is there. But what they have to do to bring out fine gold. Fine gold. Do that with your thinking. This is not work. The work is not in your moving, exporting, moving. No, the work is where you are seated in your thinking. That's work. Number three, read the Bible. Think on it and do what it says. There are principles in there. There are promises in there. There are patterns in there that you should follow. That your brain, your human intelligence cannot fathom. He says, God says your human intelligence is foolishness. He said your wisdom. His foolishness is so it does not make sense to go and get his wisdom. Where I'm not religious. Who's asking, am I being religious? This is about being religious. God is not religious, neither am I. I'm just a smart mama, and I like my smart daddy. Number four, know you will achieve your kicker's goal. Stop setting all this small tinchy winchy. And uh, when we when we make 100 pounds, then we make 200 pounds. Who's that? I told you about cuter goals. These are as opposed to smart goals, cuter goals. Cuter goals are C, have a crazy goal. C-U-T-E-R, crazy goal. Don't have a specific goal. S was specific in smart, isn't it? Oh, your goal must be specific, it must be measurable, it must be achievable. Wah -ha! What am I busy doing with the achievable goals when I can kick it out of the park? And then when you hear somebody else say, ah, they set this goal and they, hey, how do they do it? They set it. Yeah, that's how they did. They set it. So this is where we are going. Ah, can we make it? Yes, we are going for it. Until you set it, you don't go for it. <laughs> Until you set it, you've got to think it up. You say this is where we are going. So set crazy goals. R in, in the, sorry, you in the cuter is unrealistic. The R in smart is realistic. Mm -mm. Set unrealistic goals. Because what happens is when you say, I'm going to, I'm going to carry 20 of these books with one hand. Once you have thought of it and say, I'm going to carry them like this. I'm going to carry them like this. 20, not two. That's what you, your mind starts to work on. All the thoughts start, how, how will I do it? Well, okay, let me start practicing with one. Then let me put another one there. Let me put another one. Okay, I feel the weight. Okay, let me put another one there. All right. Let me put another one there. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. Okay, this is just four. Let's see. That, that, but if you said, well, let's just set a go for two, you would just put two there. You say, hey, <clears throat> this one. Okay, let's put that. Ah, yes, this is okay. <laughs> do you want to do that? Eh? Why you can go higher and not die? Set kick as good. So at this point, there's one more, I believe. Spend time with ions. It is iron that sharpens iron. When you put a knife against plastic, the knife will cut it. That's iron. It will cut the plastic in shreds. Stop sitting down with plastic people. Get more ions. Ah, eh, I can't go and talk to them. Do you know what they're going to charge? Stop it. They might say, you, I will take care of you for free. Or they might charge you 10,000 pounds for one month. Go and find it. Go and look for it. Because no matter what you pay me or me, that's what I say about me. You can't pay me. I don't care what you pay me. You can't. For what I'm going to, ah, uh, for this sweet. Okay, that lady does not earn in, in EY. I don't know what she earns now. What? 120 plus the equity on EY every year. Uh, what did she pay me? 8K? <laughs> did she pay me from her salary every day? You can't pay me. You can't. You can't pay anybody that teaches you and they're honest though. You can't. So stop counting. So I would like you to do something. I would like you to put your hands. Um, okay, I'll tell you about this in a second. Uh, let me take that off so you're not distracted. I would I'd like you to, we're going to do an experiment now. I would like you to put your hands out, just as you can see mine. On your left hand, physically, in your imagination, I want you to put a little feather from a bird or a chicken on your left hand. Now, because it's one feather, not two, I want you to make sure it doesn't fly you know, the air around you does not let it drop. So take care. Don't close your hand like that, except you need to. But 
you know, hold the feather. And if you want to close your hand, you can on your left hand. Has everybody got a feather? I'm hoping you have in your imagination and your hands must be out in real, in real life. Your hands must be out. Everything else after that is in your imagination. So there is a feather on your left hand. Now your right hand, I want you to imagine putting the biggest book in your house. If you have encyclopedias, big dictionaries, or big concordance, big Bible, put it on your right hand. If you've put one of them, the biggest, then look for the next size big book and put it on your hand. And then put a third book on your hand in your imagination and put a fourth book on your hand in your imagination and put a fifth book on your hand in your imagination. They should be big books, exercise books, notebooks, whatever books you have. Put your hands out. Make sure you're holding your feather, please. And please hold these five books. I want you to put a sixth book on that hand, on your right hand. A seventh book, please. There should be seven books on your right hand. Seven books on your right hand. Keep holding that feather, both of them. Okay. Eighth book, I need one more book on your right hand. Keep it steady. Nine books now. Okay, we'll stop at nine. Have you got nine books on your hand? Can you tell me how your hands feel? What's happening on your left hand and what's happening to your right hand? You may need to unmute. Unmute with your left hand. <laughs> tell me how you are feeling, how your hands are feeling. I need to hear from more than one person, not just a pool. Hello. Hello, sir. <laughs> just feeling like uh, that of a uh, cut uh, balancing. You know, left is moving up and the uh, right is. I'm just feeling that kind of uh, cut or scale balance something, you know. Bye. Hello. So are, are you saying one hand was heavy, one hand was light, like a scale? In form of state. Sorry, say that again. Sorry. I said that it's kind of feeling I'm at this in a form of scale. Yeah. When the hand is seems to be going up, then the left hand also take it. That is just the kind of feeling yeah. I had. Yeah. So wow. was your right hand going down and your left hand going up, or was your right hand going up and your left hand going down? It's not that uh, significant, but I'm just, uh, you know, since I, it's imagination stroke uh, reality things, it's not yeah. that it's, uh, uh, the yeah. difference not that much, but it's winning each other, like yeah. my right hand up and uh, this one comes down in the two and uh, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Anybody else? Thank you so much for that, sir. Anyone else? How did your hands feel? They are your hands, so you can't, you can't, it can't feel the same with anybody else's. So just one more person, please. Good students, good students. Come on, peeps. Can somebody say something, please? <laughs> Anybody, anybody, I need some feedback from one person. Or feed forward, as the case may be. I, I obviously don't want to speak because I'm speaking too much. <laughs> but I think what uh, the last speaker said is what it will be. So there's that pressure on the one hand with the weight. And then the other hand obviously is lighter. So that sort of balance, you're, you're, this is very light, this is very heavy. And you know, you're trying to maintain that balance, but there is weight on that one. Yes. And that's exactly what happens in your thinking. 
If you can think, imagine. Synonyms of the word think, vision, sight, see, imagine, meditate. You can just imagine that books are on your hand and there is nothing yet your hand is heavy. How? That's the reality of thought. That's what that experiment is about. That's how real your thoughts are. So it's, it's, it's creating the reality in your arm and your arm is feeling heavy. How? And there's nothing on it. How? There is a feather here and it feels light. How? Hey, hey, how? And you don't want to use your thinking. Oh, please don't do that. So what I would like to do for you is to reset your mindset so that you can up-level your productivity. This is a link. I'm not too sure how I can put this link up. Um, I will look for somebody has sent me something. Must go, great inspiration. <laughs> I'll follow you. I'm Tony T. Thompson. Thank you, Tony. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Well done. Thank you, sir. So this is what you will learn in that in the six week intensive. I am trying to make this work. OK, week one, we're going to introduce how to increase your ROI. And we're going to start with thinking immediately. It's your thinking. It's nothing else is your thinking. And usually what happens is you're telling me about your family. You're telling me about this happened. It's your business, but that happened. And this happened. And how you were brought up, a lot comes into it, but we'll sort it out. Uh, we are going to think high standards, no compromise. So we're going to tweak some things in your business because you're already compromising. You're already saying in your thinking, I can't do this. Why? So that we're going to increase your ROI. <laughs> and week three, we're going to mine for the gold on your mind because there are areas in your business you have not gone to or you have discarded, you've put aside. Like I said, there's a woman, whether she's here or not, I don't know, but I saw that you have put it to one side just so we can increase your ROI. Biblical meditation. We are going to learn how to meditate. I use biblical on purpose because there's all kinds of meditation. We ain't doing that one. Why? So we can increase your ROI. People, it's going to feel like magical. Hi. Then week five, we're going to set and achieve cast goals. So we're going to switch up your goals. We're not doing all this more. We're going to do this. No, no, no. We're going to switch it up. So I'm not just talking about write it down. Think about, um, okay, we are, we've gone for five. Let's go for six. That's not what I'm talking about. You will know what I'm talking about when we get into the class. And then look for and spend time with ions. We are going, I'm going to ensure those are the people you are spending time with. Because right now, you probably ain't. And if you are, you are, you are thinking yourself away. I used to, ah, they can do that. I can't. Does that mean? What, are, what do they have that you don't have? Then we have a bonus week, a seventh week, where we'll wrap up just so we can increase your ROI. <laughs> I like it. And the bonuses I'm giving are something I've created called the Success Thinking Plan. There's something, you know, we say create your business plan. We are creating a success thinking plan because your business plan can fail based on your thinking, not because it was a bad business plan. And that's, that's a series of videos. And I think I have a worksheet, I don't recall. But I know there is a series of videos. Then I have this report called the Revenue Accelerator, the 10 most powerful ways to increase your business revenue. So that's that link again. I honestly don't know how I'm going to do it. I think I know what I'll do here. So that I'll put in the link if you're interested. This will take you to a form that is an about you form. After I receive the form, I will now fix an appointment with you, a schedule a session with you, 30 minutes long, to determine whether we can work together or not, because not everybody that chooses to work with me that will work with me. And that's the price, it's 297. This is how to reach me. It used to be a bit more than this, but this is about how to reach me. It's, yeah. And any questions, Q and A, anything else you'd like to ask me? You're not allowed to be quiet. I was once taught that when you listen to something, Good students have questions. Woo! Mr. Omar, they put, on, put up his hand. Woo! That's so cool. Yes, sir, go ahead. Sorry, don't mind that. I want to just uh, send something on the text message and uh, say thank you. <laughs> okay. You're welcome. Anyone with questions? Let me look for that link. And put it up. Anyone with questions? Anyone with questions? Okay. 
in. I'm looking for my cursor. Anyone with disagreements? <laughs> because I'm not hearing anyone with questions. So anyone with comments? I'm told that good students ask questions. That's what I've been told. Because it shows that they were listening. So I'm going to put this in the comments, the link in the chat rather. Oh, there's something here. No chat. Thank you. You're very welcome, sir. So if you are interested, fill that form. You don't pay anything to fill the form. You just fill the form. That's it. It's free to fill the form, free to have a conversation with me for no longer than 30 minutes, and that will help me. The form really is, uh, is asking questions about what do you want to look at? Where are you? What do you want to achieve? Who are you? Stuff like that. And then that, that will help me to determine this is the kind of person I want to work with. Is this person ready to work with me? We'll, we'll schedule. Uh, a link and then we'll do what we need to do. Joy. Representation, well done, thank you. Uh, the thank yous, I appreciate them, but the best thank you for me is when you make that tweak in your thinking and you begin to soar. That is the only thank you I need. I don't need it said, I just need to watch it happen for you. So if you can go and use this, feel free. You don't have to work with me, but if you want to, that's the link, you can fill it out. Let me put down your hand, Mr. Amadi. if I know how to do that. I'm done, ma'am. Oh, wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That was powerful. It was exciting. I just kept smiling, you know, excited and thinking, oh, wow, 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 wow. And for me, we really, so, what I said in the beginning was that it, it's not just for entrepreneurs. I think it's for everybody. Yeah, yeah. I think the, the thinking process has to change for all of us, especially for us abroad in the diaspora. We need to come out of our boxes or shells mm -hmm. and break out because we have limitations in our minds. Yes, there are glass ceilings. Yes, there are barriers. But at the end of the day, it's up to us to accept those barriers or reject them or just say, no, I'm not going that way. Because, and I say this all the time, there are people in our communities who have excelled, who have got to the top. So yes, there are barriers, but those barriers can come down yep. if we want them to. Yep. And it's all about the thinking process. Mm -hmm. So this talk has been wonderful and is not limited to business people. It's for everybody. Yep. It's for us to change our thinking, for us to say to ourselves, we have to break through the glass ceilings, through the barriers, and be who God has purposed us to be. Mm. And the principles are universal principles. They're not necessarily for Christians or Muslims or for, you know, your Buddhist, your atheist. Principles are principles and they apply yeah. to people equally. And yeah. that is why non-Christians prosper or Muslims prosper or whoever prospers. You don't even have to know God to prosper because his principles apply to everybody. And they are all God's creatures or creations. Mm -hmm. And once you can get hold of those principles, you will succeed because the principles will work for you. Mm -hmm. Principles are universal. They're not a respecter of person or group or tribe or whatever it is. So it's been a wonderful, wonderful session. Thank you so much. I believe as somebody must have something to say. Joy, do you have anything to say, Tina? Miss T is in the house. Tina, mm -hmm. is there anything you want to? <laughs> there mm -hmm. must be something that you want to say, Joy. It was very proactive when we started. Joy, is there anything you want to add? Sorry, guys. Um, I I heard my name. Yeah, 
Coach Tammy has just been um, very, very awesome. Um, I've just been taking in. There, there, there are lots of things that resonated with me. And um, I didn't do the book exercise because I didn't have enough time to gather the books. Mm. So it I was in your imagination. It wasn't yeah. for you oh, to gather. Oh, in the imagination. Okay, I'm so sorry. I'm oh. sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm so sorry. So I, di I didn't do that. So I can't really give a feedback on that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. yeah. I, I didn't. I didn't do it. I the part I actually caught was the books gathering the books. So I thought we were supposed to gather it in in real terms. Mm -hmm. No, I kept saying in your imagination. In your imagination. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I didn't. I didn't. Yeah. I didn't get that. Well, thank you for your feed forward. We are never going back. We are always going forward. So I could yeah. Forward. Yeah. 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 That's it. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. So Joy and Omade, are you in our platform? Are you on the platform? Are you in our business community? Just out of interest? Yes, I am. <laughs> oh, good. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. I know Florin was with us at the last event in Feb, and I know she's on the platform. Florine, is Florine Joy? Sorry? So we have Florine. Yes, yes. Florine, yes, you yes. were with us at the last event. You, yes. you attended and you're on the platform. Wonderful. Yes, I'm on the platform. I'm trying to, <laughs> yes, to formulate. Yes. <laughs> wow, it was so, 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 so. Uh, so great, and yes. uh, you really opened my eyes on a lot of uh, bad habit of thinking. Yes. So <laughs> I'm really, really interested to to really have uh, a session with her mm -hmm. because uh, I really I, 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 I think that I really need it because wow, it was uh, a lot of things when she was just speaking. Is like she was talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, I have a lot of things that I have to correct, <laughs> and uh, I think I will need her help. <laughs> yes, yes. With so, those vision that I have, I think yes. I have to change my mindset and yes. all these things. Yeah. Yes, because I know we talked at that event. Yes, and, um, getting into that uh, area yes. of work, and mm -hmm. we need loads of inspiration. That is true. Yes. So yeah. please feel free to reach out to Coach Kemi, reach out to okay. me, and I can mm -hmm. pass a number on to you if you don't have it, or she's on the platform okay. with us. Okay. All right. Yes. Okay. So this, this is what we're about, the collaboration, the support mm -hmm. for one another to hold each other's hands so that we can all come up to that level where mm -hmm. we really need to be, because yeah. we have to take over this economy. We mm -hmm. need to take it over. We need to be visible. We need to be out there. We need to come out of our shells oh, and goodness. under the radar and be out there, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. doing what we should do. So, yeah. yeah. Thank encourage. you so much. Thank really, you. thank you so much for that coaching. So really, really appreciate it. You're Wonderful. welcome. <laughs> Wonderful. So thank you also very much for joining. So we started yeah. a bit late. Yes. Okay. Um, and we have... Uh, events coming up every other month. We should have another one for April. So please uh, be on the lookout for details and information about the next training session, uh, which will be face-to-face -face hopefully uh, next month. And like I said, it's all part and supported or sponsored by the National Library. And we will run a few more uh, from now till the summer. So please uh, be on the lookout and watch out for more information. So thank you so much, Kemi. We can't thank you enough. Thank Share you. The, the, the recording yes, you once it on the platform so that people can key into it. Sure. And you know, this kind of talk, people are usually very quiet mm. because you are talking to them. <laughs> you're talking to me, you're talking to all of us and you're mm. saying to us, Stop it. Stop mm. it. <laughs> mm. Stop thinking small. Mm. Think big because you have the ability, you have everything that it takes to be out there to succeed. Yeah. 
So these uh, sorts of um, uh, talks, you know, they, they sort of intimidate people, if you like, because people ask time, how am I going to do that? Is she for real? Mm. You know, where am I going to get this confidence? Where will I get the funds that I need? Where will I get this and that? But it's all possible. This is what Coach Kem is telling us. It is all possible if we make it possible in our minds. The mind is the battleground. That is where battles are won or lost. It starts from there. So let's get into what she's shared with us today and, and take everything that we need to take from this talk and run with it. It's not to hear and then let it out through the other mm. end. So mm. it's run with what we've heard. Yeah. It's free. She hasn't charged us for it. It's all free and we need to, um, you know, just um, key into it and run with it. Um, Florence is saying that she can't, she has difficulty opening the link you shared. Yeah, so please, so maybe, anyway, she can reach out to you. She can reach out to you on the platform. Yeah. Yes. Florence, you can contact me if you can't reach uh, Kemi. Just mm -hmm. uh, let me know. Okay. So okay. thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. See you again soon. And hopefully we can all see face to face. Yes. And share yeah. with one another. Thank you, Coach Kemi. It's been thank amazing. You. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. All Good right. night, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye, Tina. Bye, Joy. Bye. 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 Bye.